Hey guys, this is Jeremy with I Kill Orchids, and I am here to let you know about this month's giveaway orchids. I'm so excited. This has been um, a wonderful time of putting things together, and they have been provided to us by one of my absolute favorite v uh, vendors. His name is Mark Ranke, and he is with Marble Branch Farms. Um, he is... Well, I will let him introduce himself, and that's actually what he's going to do in the video. But um, I want you to know these are three absolutely, and yes, I did say three, three absolutely amazing orchids. They are in fabulous shape. They're in excellent health, and um, they're de this is the standard for Mark. So if you guys, um, whether you win an orchid this month or not, if you are looking for an amazing place to get excellent orchids, you definitely need to check out Mark and Marble Branch Farms. He does have a website you can purchase from there. He doesn't always have it completely updated with all of his stock. So if you have any questions, always feel free to send him an email and he'll let you know what he has available. Um, regardless of what it is, whether it's on the website or not, I promise you, you are always going to get excellent orchids from Mark. So I'm so excited that he is providing the orchids for this month. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens, not only with the ones that um, I'm keeping and am going to document for everyone, but also the ones that y'all win and how they do for you. Uh, he's chosen three um, absolutely beautiful orchids that... Um, they're not, they're not difficult to care for. They require some attention, but they're not difficult to care for. And I don't think that there's going to be anybody that has a hard time with these. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes. So without further ado, I am going to go ahead and transition into the video where Mark is introducing himself, as well as the three orchids that we're doing for this month's giveaway. So, hey guys, thank you. And, um, I can't wait to see how this month goes. Hi, I'm Mark Allen Reinke, and uh, I started growing orchids when I was 12 years old. So this year is 50 years that I've been growing orchids. And uh, it was a hobby most of my life, but uh, I lived here in Atlanta for 30 years and ran a travel agency, and when I decided to sell that, I decided to buy a chunk of land and uh, find a place to grow plants and so I started an orchid business about 14 15 years ago so now I actually eke out a living doing nothing but selling orchids and carnivorous plants so and oh I, my farm is up in the western tip of South Carolina where I could get a big chunk of land at a reasonable price back then so I live in the wilderness there's bears and rattlesnakes and things like that occasionally so I'm going to talk about three orchids here uh, this one these big leaves almost doesn't look like an orchid to most people, does it? This is a phaeocalanth. It's actually a combination of phaeus and calanth. They're two genus, genera, from Southeast Asia. And they live on the ground rather than up in trees, where many tropical orchids do. So you grow this much more like a house plant than a typical orchid. It likes wet toes, likes to be fed a lot, lots of fertilization. Uh, can bloom twice a year, but for sure you're going to have flowers in winter and uh, you're going to be dividing your plant every few years because it will grow so fast. So I actually grow these in my greenhouse sitting in a shallow tray of water all the time. It makes them grow much better and they, much, they keep their leaves in much better condition. If you see ones that dry between waterings, they'll have brown tips. When it blooms, it makes a magnificent spike of flowers that comes up from the base of the bulb. They bloom from the bottom upwards and they're a uh, vivid purple with a white backside. And if you have a really sturdy growth, you can get two flower spikes from that one single growth. I have seen a plant with 48 spikes on it growing, sitting in a tub of fertilizer water. <laughs> it was not my plant, but it was incredible. Okay, now this orchid, this is a type of dendrobium, uh, but just saying that a type of dendrobium is uh, not explaining much because they've kept dendrobium as a giant genus of orchids with 1,300 species that grow all the way from Japan to Australia to New Zealand to India. So there's all kinds of dendrobiums. This one happens to be from a section they call Petalinum. And it grows near the equator in tropical forests where it does not 
change year round. It's actually a natural hybrid between two species, Goldschmidtianum and Bolenianum. And so they gave it kind of a scientific name because when they found it, they thought it was a species. It's Dendrobium usitae. I think that's the best pronunciation. And one of those parents has yellow flowers with red stripes, while the other one has vivid purple flowers with even deeper stripes. So every one of these is a little bit different, but they tend to be a purple flower with a yellow underglow. And they will not bloom on growths that are still growing. So this growth is still producing new leaves, so it's not going to bloom for a while. Then you can see this plant also has a completely bare one because after they stop growing, they start losing their leaves. And these little things here are re the remains of the first bloom spikes this plant made earlier this spring. Uh, they can bloom at any time, just whenever they feel like it. And usually you get several flushes a year and they're dense clusters of cute little flowers. And they'll come all up and down the stem until it just runs out of places. And here's a little baby growth just starting right here. So eventually you'll have a lot of these growths and it will be a, a showstopper when it blooms. This one likes to be watered year-round, no dress period, and um, it can take a pretty good range of temperature because it's a mix of a mountain-growing species and a sea-level growing species. So anywhere from 45 to 95 and a little bit above or below if it has to. Pretty easy to grow, fairly shady growing, doesn't need any direct sun to bloom well. Good one for the house because it would grow in those household temperatures just fine. You just got to keep watering it, can't sit dry. Okay. That might tip over. This is also a dendrobium. Completely different look, isn't it? So this plant has long ca fluted canes with leaves clustered near the top. It's in a group we call Laturia dendrobiums. Uh, they come from New Guinea, so some people call them New Guinea dro dendrobiums, but that's a bad name for them because there's lots of kinds of dendrobiums in New Guinea. That is a previous bloom spike right there. I think I saw another one. Yeah, here's another one. So this one will bloom. Uh, in between the top leaves and under each leaf. So if you have three leaves, you can have five bloom spikes off that growth over the life of that growth. And it may take years for all that to happen. These don't really start blooming well until they're nice big plants like this. So from now on, this one should put out a nice show. For this type of orchid, it's generally from January to June. Uh, this one is called Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga. He's a guy in, uh, in Hawaii who actually kind of started this breeding line for the American market. This gets nice upright spikes of white flowers, and this is like the third or fourth generation of this cross, so they've been picking the best and combining them. So a lot of these have really cool spots on them, really nice things. Uh, another one that doesn't need bright light, just general light to grow. Household temperatures are fine, although it will take a range from 40s to 90s, and again, water regularly. You can see this one is just ready for a bigger pot. You notice it's a lot of plant in a small pot, but for a dendrobium, that's what they want. If you give this a huge pot, you're going to delay flowering that much longer. So now that there's new roots right here coming out of this new growth, this one could go up, maybe give it three quarters of an inch on whatever side it's growing on. This one's growing on two sides, so you'd have to do it on both sides. And then that's it. You can use a mix that drains, but also holds a little bit of moisture because you want to water it on a regular basis all year round.